It's, it's real, real breakfast, breakfast hours. hours. Eat breakfast if you up. Today's, Today's breakfast, breakfast is. We really have the same thing. Yeah, it was just a couple of waffles. I think they're chocolate chip waffles, Eggos. The Eggos, yeah. Yes, and uh, I had some sausage with it. And I had a glass of water. Welcome back. Woo! Number 14. 14, that's uh, pretty good. And... Boom. That's as good as it's going to get. All right. Uh... I should get a whiteboard or some little... Well... So, we were at Newberry Comics the other day, and we saw they had that couples game. They had, like, a little card box that said it came with two um, whiteboards and, like, dry erase markers and a lot of questions. And I was like, we should get that sometime for the thing. We could redo the couples game, but, like, for real. With actual questions with, from the actual game. Yeah, so... Be a little count, maybe we'll do that. It was like twenty dollars, so yeah, it wasn't outrageous or anything like that. We just didn't, didn't want buy to it. spend it at that point. So maybe in a few weeks or months, we'll see. Uh, oh, should I get the cat cam out, folks? Oh yes. The, the man cat. is abound. He's in the window right now. Um, the window right above where his water uh, container is. Bowl. That's the word. Bowl. Right above his bowl, he's in that window. He loves to sit there during like the morning and the mid portion of the day. He gets a lot of sunlight, and he loves it. So he's having a good time. We're having a good time. We're uh, cracking open a cold one with real breakfast hours. Now that was crisp. This is an Aroma Joe's Rush. If you are not in New England or Florida for some reason, because there's a few locations in Florida of all places, Aroma Joe's is, you know, your typical coffee shop kind of deal, but they have these rushes, which are really good. It's just like an energy drink, and then they put syrups in it. Kind of like water talk, but with actual drinks, and you don't call it water because it's not. A little dig for you. Roasting the, what do they call themselves, the water talk the water girlies. water talk girlies. Barbaric. Yeah, me when I take water and then I put... Endless amounts of syrup and uh, sugar and powder into it, and it's mm, you can't even recognize it anymore. Yeah, it's <laughs> and gross. I still call it water. It's not even water at that point. It's like I'm drinking a ghost energy drink. I don't think I've ever had these before. Maybe once or twice. It's uh, flavored like the blue Sour Patch Kids, blue raspberry. So pretty good. Nice. Would you like a sip? No, I do not. Oh. You've had that before. I must have. I feel like I have. Um, but, um, and I've had it before, but I'm good. <laughs> this is predominantly water, right? I mean, most beverages are predominantly made with water. I would never call this water because it's obviously soda or an energy drink or, you know, whatever else. That is what these TikTok girls do, right? They put pounds of syrup other nonsense, powder. syrup, powder... Sugar, right? You mix it up. It's not It's not water anymore. <laughs> no. At what point does it stop being water? Yeah. So that's my little dig at the water talk girlies while we talk about our drinks. But before we get too far into it, let's uh, shout out the breakfast that oh, we Oh, yes. This Let me week. pull those up. Uh, do you want to go first? Yeah. So I did get one submission from my mom. Also, I should apologize. Last time we filmed, I said I didn't have any, but I think my mom had... Submitted her breakfast, but for some reason, because it came from my mom, I kind of just, like, thought she was sending me her breakfast just to show me what she had, and it didn't click in my brain what that it was fiend. for the podcast. Oh, upsetting. Um, so sorry, Mom. Sorry to my friends, although you're still... I mean, no one else did, so... It's just I let mom. you down. You thought I was a real one, and I let you down. So, but, uh, they had... So it looks like toast, eggs... Bacon, some blueberries. My mom said she made mm. it. It looks really yummy. Love blueberries. I had some chocolate-covered blueberries yesterday, and they were very good. Yep. They're extremely rich. I'd eat them slow, but uh, I got one from our good friend Jugs, a.k.a. Yugs. Oh, Yugs? Why Yugs. Yugs? Okay. It's, it's not Yugs, but it's funny to say it the wrong way on purpose. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he sent it. First of all, it was like noon when he sent this, at, or maybe, maybe even been 1 p.m. Uh, 12.41 p.m. So... For me, definitely lunchtime, though. He he lives a bit more out west, so it's probably like 11 for him. Uh, he said, quote, This is going to get some mixed reactions, but breakfast was a leftover sandwich with shredded chicken, chorizo potatoes, cheese, and ranch. And he sent me a picture. And I said, you know what? We'll take it. 
As a sandwich, it sounds pretty good. Definitely an odd choice for breakfast, but I've also just had straight up leftover like Chinese food. We for had breakfast. wings for breakfast in that one episode, didn't we? Uh, like yeah. we had something left over for breakfast. Well, there was one, one that we ate wings for brec- for the the podcast. We ate the wings with the podcast. Yeah, that was real dinner hours. Though. Yes, but there was another one before that, I believe, where my breakfast was a bunch of leftover wings. Probably. It was leftover something not traditional in breakfast food. Yeah, so uh, Anyways, yeah. your sandwich is fine, Jugs. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, shout out to everyone for sending breakfast. Keep it coming. We'd love to see what you're eating. Um, love to encourage people to enjoy some breakfast. So we know that it's the most up. important meal of the day. And how are we supposed to know that you're up if you don't send us your breakfast? Yeah. So, I would also like to point out, just top of the episode sort of things, we are at 90 subscribers again. Ooh. We had... Well, I have one voice a, crack. Yeah. <laughs> <Boom>. <laughs> and two, weren't we above 90 at one point? No, we, we had gotten to 90... And then we were there for a few days, and someone must have unsubscribed. Two, two, two. Two, two, two. Spit. Truly disgusting. Um, and then I bullied one of her <laughs> kind of family friends into... Yes. Uh, <laughs> into subscribing. Not really bullied, but anyway. Thank you, Jermaine. Yeah, thank you, Jermaine. So, um, now we're at 90, 10 away from 100, which is really going to be, I feel like, the first big milestone for real breakfast hours. Absolutely. 100 I mean, is a good round number. It's really my channel, but Real Breakfast Hours right now is the main content that we're making. Although I do hope to make a few videos in the next few weeks now that I'm on break. So be looking forward to that. It's funny, it is it is your YouTube channel, but since a bulk of the content is our podcast, it almost feels like our YouTube channel, though it is, it is yours. Yeah. So... That was just something I wanted to throw out there. Uh, tell your friends about the podcast. Um, anything helps. And I've heard from some friends that like even if they don't fully pay attention, they'll put it on in the background just to get the view count up. So thanks. You guys they'll are real ones. They'll leave a like ones. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, real ones for real. Appreciate the support in any way. Earlier we were in the car because I went and had to get my hair cut. And she said to me, oh, uh, oh no, you know what it was? We saw an airplane. And she goes, wow, that's a lovely airplane. Oh, remind, reminder, not to fly southwest anytime soon because... And then I cut her off. I was like, stop right there. You can talk about it in the podcast. I Let me tell you, I haven't been able to say anything to this man all weekend without him being like, tell me on the podcast. <laughs> Can't I have a conversation with my own boyfriend? You gotta save your good oh, stories for the podcast. Yeah, but I... to me, like, it's not a good story. It's just like a uh, thing that like, oh, if we go travel, let's not do Southwest Airlines. But since he thought maybe other people don't know, if in case you weren't aware, Southwest Airlines has been having like hundreds, maybe even thousands of cancellations of their flights. It's been real not good. Very... Uh, are the consumers canceling or is Southwest no, themselves canceling? No, like Southwest canceling? is canceling flights and people are getting oh. like stranded and things. Or Yikes. like they can't get to their things. Like it's very um, unreliable, I guess I would say. So maybe don't fly Southwest Airlines anytime soon. Um, I've also heard really bad things about like Frontier Airlines, but that's just because it's like a Spirit equivalent where it's like really cheap. But some people, people were saying it was even worse than Spirit, so... Probably not Frontier and not Southwest unless you want a high probability of your flight getting canceled. So those are my tips for you uh, if you're traveling. We're going to put a little airplane in the thumbnail tonight? Or we're we're going to get like a cup of tea because <laughs> I got tea. Oh, God. Taylor Swift? We have many things. To, I have many things to say about Taylor Swift. Yes. There's, there's been Swifties. There's been many things going on. The Swift uh, apocalypse. Not Southwest even really. Airlines. It's like a renaissance for you Taylor Swift people. Truly. I was telling Mike that I really want to do a tea episode. Have like little like... Uh, teacups? Teacups and like finger sandwiches, you know, kind of thing. And like we're, But it's like it's like a tea party, but we're spilling tea. I think it would be a great idea. He was like... Mm -hmm. I feel like as much as I love to hear her speak and uh, share her little stories... I feel like I would look like the uh, like the dad or the older brother who like is sitting at the little like the daughter's toy chair and he's got like his knees up. He's like, 
It would like, be good. It's not, you know, a little tea party vibe is not But it's for me. spilling tea. Let me know in the comments if you want to see us do the tea party thing. We might do it anyways because I really think it's a funny idea. I'm sure our good friend and longtime supporter, Crollo, would love that idea. Yeah, thanks. That guy loves him some Haley Bieber uh, gossip. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, okay, so that's Southwest. We'll check that one off. Right. Boom, boom. Uh, let's see. What are some some life updates before we break too far into the rest of the stuff? Like, Do we have life updates? Uh, not anything major other than I put my car in the shop recently, so she had to drive me around all week. Oh, yes. Uh, right. she, had to, she had to bring me to and pick me up from work, which was very kind of her. Uh... It's like, hey, guess what? You can clear off the microwave. What the heck? I only bring it up because she she used to say to me, I don't even do it that often. So now I have to point it out when she does it because yes, you do do it that often. But it's like once every few days. It's not even that bad. It shouldn't be at all. Okay, well anyways, yes, I had to wake up super early to get this man to, well not even super early, but like an hour or two earlier than I wanted to be awake. I go into work at 8.30, it wasn't, it's not that early. So I had to wake, I'm on vacation, so I had to wake up at 8, but I want to get up at like 9.30, maybe 10 on vacation, which means that I was always like, man, I feel gypped of my sleep. So then I would go back to sleep, but it would take me like an hour or two to even fall back asleep because realistically I probably just should have stayed up, but I was so mad that I had lost my hour or two of <laughs> sleep that I was like, no, so I was determined, but then I wouldn't fall asleep for like an hour or two and then I would just wake up at like noon. Uh, I was so just yes. having like half days and like I didn't mind picking you up at in the evenings, but at like five, yeah. it was so annoying. But it was just like if you went in just a little bit later, then it probably would have been good. But because you go in, because you you used to go in later. Yeah. At your uh, old job, right? Or no? No. Oh. No, I used to work. I used to go in at eight. Oh. Yeah. So I don't know. But you got earlier. Yeah, at four. I would get out at four. Now I get out at five. But. Anyway, I'm not gonna lie, y'all. Some of the some people like if my dad's watching this, he's not gonna be happy to hear this. But I checked engine light was on for like a year, and now it's off. So, <laughs> well, I, so when it turned on last year before we moved in together, I panicked right away. I was like, oh god, my check engine light's on. Was it gonna explode? Like I was, I was very worried. So. I immediately took it to AutoZone because they have the thing where they can free diagnose your, your check engine light. Yeah. They just plug a little thing in your car, talks to them, and tells them what's wrong. And it said I had some, like, fuel line issue. And I was like, oh, God. And he goes, don't worry. It's, like, 95% chance your gas cap is loose. So, like, oh, fine. So then I just ignored it for a while. And then eventually, kind of, like, a couple of months ago, I finally ordered a new gas cap. And it's like, I cut, you know, it wasn't a big deal to me. You got the cat, nice. I ordered a new gas cap, put it on, the light did not go off. So, something else is probably amiss here, something that's not the gas cap, but I've already been driving on it for eight months, so it clearly couldn't be that big of a deal. But uh, it's fixed now, so that's good. What about you? Oh, me? Anything new? I don't have anything new. I'm on vacation. What have you been doing on vacation? What are you doing to kill time? sleeping because i had to pick you up early <laughs> that's only been for a week you've been on vacation longer than a last week last week i was finishing up those papers or whatever i feel like so okay. i went to the gym a little bit but i had not really done that much like i said i gotta make some videos i watched Br the new season of bridgerton um which what, are, is... what are your thoughts on bridgerton good bad oh i love bridgerton the queen charlotte one was good. I don't think it was better than the other two seasons, though. And I don't think... Because I've heard mixed reviews about it. I was like, it's honestly... The, the bad things I heard about it, I don't think were that bad. And the good things I heard about it were not that good. <laughs> she said it was mid. No, it wasn't mid. It was good. I enjoyed it. And I was, like, excited to see what was happening next, you know? But I just think, like, the uh, things I heard people say about it, I didn't necessarily agree with. But I did enjoy it. 
I just don't think it- I think it was maybe not as- it was not my favorite one, I guess. But I still liked it, because I think Bridgerton in general was very good. So even if it was, like, probably not my favorite one, maybe, like, my third favorite, I don't know. It's so hard to say, you know? But it was still very good. And... <laughs> I'm shaking hands with the cat. I don't even know if you can see him on the camera, because the computer might be in the way. Yeah. But I'm very much on a, like historical fiction like kick now because I was watching Bridgerton because it's like once you're in that world you just want to keep seeing it you know I want bring back the balls and the big gowns and stuff you know what I'm saying I kind of want that oh I know what you're saying we went and saw Guardians of the Galaxy 3 um I was very pretty excited for it I've been very lukewarm to disinterested on Marvel content since No Way Home the one that uh came out right after Endgame with Spider-Man. Yeah. I, uh, the Marvel movies and the TV shows have been lukewarm. Some of them are alright. Like, I, I enjoyed Hawkeye. I liked most of them. Like, they were fine. You know, like 6 out of 10s. Mm. But, uh, Guardians 3 was very good. Th this one I would give, like, a 9. Uh, this is the best thing I've seen from Marvel since No Way Home, probably. It was very good, and it was an emotional roller coaster. I was like almost crying many times throughout the movie. Yeah, it was the first. All the Marvel movies are PG thirteen. Most of them could get away with being PG if they didn't have violence, um, but it's all that sanitized Disney violence. Like if you watch Star Wars, we we watched. Um, we started watching Andor recently. We finished the newer season of The Mandalorian. Uh, when people get shot in Star Wars or any other property owned by Disney, they kind of just fall over. Like, nobody nobody ever bleeds, nobody, like, explodes or anything. Not that I'm saying they need to explode, but when somebody gets their head cut off, you'd expect a little blood, and it just isn't. And that's kind of how the Marvel movies are, too, even though they're shooting rockets and things. But uh, Guardians 3 had a bit more of that. It felt like an actual PG-13 movie to an extent. Uh, there was more, one in particular curse word that uh, warrants a PG-13 rating, so I'll cover your kids' ears, I guess. Yeah, it was very funny, because people always joke that you can drop one F-bomb in a PG-13 movie, right? So, like, and they never do. They don't, most PG-13 movies will not use it, um, even though they technically are allowed one, I guess, to still have the PG-13 rating. So there's always jokes and, like, memes about, like, oh, in this movie, like, I don't know, Spongebob says the F word or something, yeah, like, like, right? <laughs> like, they'll, they'll joke about it, but then it doesn't actually happen. But in this one, there was actually an F-bomb, so. There was, and there was a couple of very heartbreaking scenes of, like, animal abuse and a bit of body horror. Yeah. Where, yeah, and I'm not to get into spoilers because the movie's still new and some of the people who watch this might not have seen it yet. But uh, I actually I do highly recommend you go see it. It was very good. You yeah. Know, you have to be aware that uh, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It is a PG-13 movie and it does it feels like it for once. But it was good. You yeah, should see it. It was definitely really good. And the Guardians movies are always super fun. I like that they use music in them as like... You know, it's just, obviously a lot of movies have soundtracks and they have music in the background, but not in the way that Guardians uses the music in the background, since a lot of times it's, oh no, the characters are actively listening to the music mm -hmm. while we are, versus like, it's just kind of playing over. So I, I enjoy that. And then we, or especially you, I know sometimes when you complain about certain Marvel movies. Oh, uh, Marvel-isms, yeah. Yeah, like the Marvel-isms of the humor, but like, that those marvel isms and that type of humor kind of originated with guardians of the galaxy so it feels good and natural in a guardians movie or at least i don't mind it in those because that's that's what those movies are they've always been like well that. yeah i can explain it pretty quickly if you don't mind um if you go back and you look at the marvel movies are broke up into phases if you go back into phase one like with your iron man one and your thor one and the incredible hulk and the first avengers movie there was humor predominantly with Iron Man. Tony Stark was hilarious. But that was because he was like an arrogant... Like, he was rude. He, I'm trying not to use bad language here, but Iron Man was a guy that you kind of wanted to hate because he's this rich, 
like alcoholic narcissist who's rude to everybody but he does it in such a way that it's like charming and funny um but then thor a very serious character with serious movies incredible hulk serious character serious movie iron man or uh, excuse me captain america same way very serious the first avengers movie was funny in the way that captain america doesn't understand things because he's an old man who got sent to the future it's funny because iron man is there and he's funny but everybody else is serious and then the first guardians of the galaxy comes out and star lord is this oaf from the 90s who like glorifies footloose and like dancing to save the universe and stuff and it was it was different it was unique it was original that movie was very successful at the box office all these movies were but i think that one was the first time and then like that first ant-man was a little kind of funny too because of paul rudd um but guardians one was the movie that really set the tone for the marvel humor going forward because then um you get to like thor ragnarok for example went full like nosedive into the guardians of the galaxy sense of humor and it was uh it was jarring to see thor a very serious character suddenly behaving this way um, and I liked that movie, but then, like, Love and Thunder, oh my god, Love and Thunder is, all the serious aspects of, like, Thor's character are, not entirely, but they're very different, and it, all the movies now sort of feel like they want to be the Guardians of the Galaxy, um, which is bad, but when Guardians of the Galaxy does it, it's okay, because that's, like, their brand. Yeah, so, I, it was just a very good movie. And things that sometimes people complain about with Marvel, I feel like you can't really complain about in this movie because it's just, that's how Guardians is. <laughs> yeah, people complain about Superman the same way. Not the modern, super, like not Man of Steel, but people who don't read comic books mostly. You'll see people in like the YouTube or the Facebook or the Twitter replies and stuff. They'll say things like, oh, Superman is boring. He's so cliche. Uh, Superman physically cannot be cliche because everything that you think is cliche about him he invented like when you see another hero say like oh i fight for truth and justice superman did that first he's who popularized that oh well he's just strong and flies yeah because superman was like the first guy who did that right like you can't it's unfair to say that the guardians suffer marvel isms when it's like their thing yeah um another thing actually that happened today that i wanted to talk about so we're talking about things we did kind of we went to Bed Bath & Beyond today. Oh, yes, we did. I don't know if you've heard, but they're declaring bankruptcy closing. The whole, the whole brand? I thought it was just the one store. No, it's not the, no, that's what I'm saying. The whole thing declared bankruptcy, oh. which is why I wanted to go. Because if you don't know, usually when stores declare bankruptcy, they close all, if not most, of um, their stores. Like, what do they call that? Brick and mortar store, right? Yeah. I don't know, their outlets. They co close all the, like, physical stores, and they will, everything's, like, super on sale. Like, I'm talking at least 50% off, sometimes, like, 80, 90% off, because they need to get rid of all this yeah, stuff. Like everything they must have. go style yeah, sales. Yeah, it's usually everything must go, because they literally declared bankruptcy, okay? Right? Tell me why we walk into this Bed Bath & Beyond store closing, okay, right? Which is closing because they declared bankruptcy or whatever. The own the whole store, twenty to forty percent off. Which, by the way, it was pretty much all twenty percent off. We saw like there was bed like, skirts. It was duvet 40. covers were forty yeah. percent off, and like probably a few random things. But the majority of the store, I would say ninety five plus percent of the store was twenty percent off. You're gonna come to me, you're gonna look at me and tell me, oh, I have to close my store, so look at all this stuff I have, and you're only gonna put it at 20% off? I'm so, I'm disgusted. I, this is not <laughs> a store closing sale. If you're a store closing sale, you better be selling things to me for dirt cheap. I'm expecting a $400 pan to be $20. Oh my God. I swear to God, like, I need, or at least half off, right? 20%? That's like a normal sale. That's I walk into Kohl's and things are 50% off and they're not even closing, okay? Or at least 40%. Like, you're going to tell me you're closing and going bankrupt and it's only 20% off? You see this hat she's wearing? 
That was 30% off at Hot Topic yesterday. Yes, that's even more. So what is going on? I'm, I I don't know what it is. Like, I assume it's a cash grab kind of thing where they think maybe... Of course. I don't know how bankruptcy works, okay? I'm not a finance guy. But all I can say is, it's very sus to me that you say that you need to declare bankruptcy so you're closing all these stores, but then you only do 20% off. So I have a feeling they're like saying this, but maybe they're not actually. So, or they're only doing 20% off because they think people are rushing because that's what you do. So you get the good deals and then it's only 20% off. So they're still making a, ba a huge profit and then like maybe they don't have to close everything or maybe they don't have to go bankrupt. But either way, I feel like it is so greedy, disgusting. Uh, this is not this is not my store closing sale, okay? Like I don't understand. She's been bothering me to go there for a while and I, I just thought the store would be feel like empty. It. I thought it would be wiped out because I'm expecting these huge sales. No, things were still hundreds of dollars at this Bed Bath and Beyond. Oh well, also they're mostly like we need a we need a new pan. Like just a new frying pan. Uh well, they pretty much are only selling them in like four hundred dollar ten piece sets. Like, no, I'm good, you know. Yeah, I mean, they had a few individual ones, but the individual ones were like two hundred or three hundred dollars on their own. Yeah, like some crazy, really good. Like, I made a joke. The reason we need a new pan is because the one last one we bought was probably under fifty dollars, right? Yeah. Maybe if we got a three hundred dollar one, we wouldn't have to replace it. But uh, I'm not spending three hundred dollars in a frying pan right now. No. So, don't go to Bed Bath & Beyond if you're expecting good sales. In fact, I would encourage you not to go at all until we... I'm waiting. I'm going to make these guys, like, they better go to up to, like, 50, 80% off. Because if they don't, don't go. Let them suffer, okay? Let them suffer and die. You heard it here first. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, oh, yeah. So, then after we're at Bed Bath & Beyond, we went to Dick's Sporting Goods. Because it's right across from where I got my haircut and uh, there was a little bit of a wait. Uh, so we go in there and uh, I don't know if we mentioned this before, but we're going on vacation in June to the beach uh, down south. Or I don't know if it's technically the south. I don't. Is it south of the Mason-Dixon line? Uh, we're going to the Carolinas. And I don't know if it's south of the Mason-Dixon. Well, the point is we're going to the beach. And I wanted swim shorts. My grandmother bought me some. I wanted some new ones. It is. So it is in the south. Anyway, I wanted new swim shorts. We went in there and I wanted some variety. And she wants to get a bathing suit that matches whatever I end up with. Right? So we can, we can, uh, we yeah. can flex on them. It just separates Pennsylvania from like Maryland and Virginia. Or West Virginia. I guess that's fair because Virginia is the Definitely south. Definitely south. Yeah. Sorry, geography. Even though, like, lesson there. It's kind of in the middle. Yeah. But you definitely would consider it south because, I mean, Just if you think about culture, 1776 yeah. and all those things, and Hamilton. Anyways, continue. Also, wasn't the capital of the south, the Richmond, which is in Virginia? All I know is that I think a lot of the. Like, Thomas Jefferson, I think, is from Virginia. Yeah. So. Anyway. Shorts. Dick Sporting Goods. I saw some pink ones with crocodiles on them. Swim trunks. Swim trunks, yes. Uh, some people don't like to wear... Some men usually don't like to wear pink. I think that's an insecurity. Pink looks nice. Not on everything, <laughs> yeah. but uh, some pink can look fun. And it had crocodiles on it. I love crocodiles. So I didn't even look at them. I, they're swim trunks. I just grabbed them. Grabbed this. Went to go check out. He's like, alright, sir, your total will be $72. I'm like, Excuse me? What? He's like, yeah, the shorts are like $65. I'm like, what? I don't need those. $65 for swim trunks that they were Chubby's brand. Never even heard of them. Yeah. They were nice shorts, but $65. So, for uh. Swim trunks? Outrageous. Do not shop at Chubby's. Where I don't know if they have outlets or if they are just a brand that gets sold in other locations like the Dicks, but, uh. I mean, as nice as they were. That's so much. They were like some one of the. They were perfect, right? They look. They look great. But sixty-five dollars for swim trunks. Jeez. That's just outrageous. Positively ridiculous. So I put him back. Yeah. Which is too bad because 
His thing is kind of crocodiles. He's a very, he's a lizard man. And then I love pink. So and we kind of want to match. Maybe she, like, she could have had a pink suit. In the same color. Yeah. Pink. And then I could add my gators. It would yeah, look nice. It would have been so good. But alas, it's not to be because they were $65 swim trunks or 68 whatever. Barbaric for sure. Something actually barbaric. I mean, this is barbaric, but like, this is a different level of barbaric. True. This is like truly evil levels of barbaric. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but Minnesota was working on this bill to basically you would ha hospitals would have to ensure that they had safe nurse staffing numbers um because we've definitely talked about the nurse shortages and the strikes and that sort of stuff before because they're overworked like pretty much everyone in healthcare is overworked right now uh, which leads to lots of problems both on the worker side and for patients like poor patient outcomes and it's just bad all around like there's no positive to overworking these things other than the companies and the hospitals make a lot of money oh, that's sweet profit so minnesota was actually making a law to ensure that they were there was these like safe staffing numbers i think for nurses which is a good thing but mayo clinic basically blackmailed them and said that they would pull funding from the state I don't know how that works, but I guess maybe it's kind of the similar- I guess, I don't know, they are like technically a company, I guess, even though it's like a hospital. So they must fund things Well, they, they probably donate to hospital construction, and maybe they donate to like football fields and schools, things yeah. like that. Anyways, a lot of that public they, stuff. they like blackmailed Minnesota government and was like, if you pass this, or at least if you don't make us exempt, um, we're gonna pull the funding. Which- Okay, way to sound like an actual villain. You're blackmailing the government that's trying to enforce safe staffing numbers? At a hospital? At a hospital? Way to show that you don't care about your patients at all. Unfortunately, Mayo Clinic won full exemption from the nurse staffing bill in agreement with state, lo state leaders. So, and apparently it's called the Keeping Nurses at the Bedside Act is going to pass, but may all of Mayo Clinic's facilities in Minnesota will be fully exempt from the union-backed bill. And so all other hospitals in Minnesota have to form staffing committees made up of equally, oh, made up equally of direct care workers and hospital leaders. And I think it's pretty much to ensure that there's safe staffing numbers and probably like fair pay for them. Here were things on the actual bill that Mayo Clinic is exempt from. Which, personally, if you ask me, that just shows corruption. There shouldn't be any hospital that is exempt from this, considering these are all things that affect patient safety and quality of care. Also, I, uh, I was kind of looking over your shoulder while you were scrolling through there. It said that Mayo Clinic is one of the largest private sector employers in the entire state of Minnesota. So, they have some significant portion of the pie and are entirely exempt from this. So that could really affect uh, the populace. Yeah. Over there. So here are some things. Established nurse staffing committees to set staffing levels. So they're going to have a committee that says what the safe number is. Um, the maximum limit on the number of patients that any one nurse can care for safely. No more patients in emergency department hallways. This is huge um, and especially in COVID there was lots of patients that were just left in the middle of the hallway on like a bed basically because there was no rooms um, which obviously is not an ideal situation at all so this seems like a good thing for patients and I'm sure the families will appreciate not having their family member just in the middle of the hallway um, something about a resource for patients and nurses. I think it's talking about charge nurses. So, I guess the staffing committees would be directed to create a plan to ensure charge nurses do not have individual patient assignments. Oh, I see. So, the charge nurse, I think, is supposed to be kind of like the head nurse in a way that, like, is helping with assignments and things. But, so they wouldn't get any individual patients, so they could better help the other nurses sort of things. Because, obviously, if you have to take care of your own patients, then it's kind of hard to help make, make sure everything else is going okay. 
Um, and then it says hospital transparency for Minnesota patients. Um, so it would direct the Minnesota Department of Health to review hospital data on patient care and staffing to produce an annual report grading Minnesota hospitals on whether they follow their staffing plans. And it would require hospitals to post waiting times for emergency departments and provide up-to-date unit staffing information to patients so that they know, which is good. It would prevent workplace violence. Um, so I think it's just protection because that is the other thing is that um, sometimes nurses really have to put up with a lot and it's not always safe, you know, if patients or family members start, like, attacking you. Well, some people can get violent in the hospital, like... If you're on drugs or something, those people can be very unhinged in uh, these situations. Yeah, so that's a good thing. Um, there's just a point for retaining and sustaining Minnesota nurses. So it's, uh, I think, allocating money for um, a new student loan forgiveness program for nurses in Minnesota. And just like grants for mental health um and healthcare workers and then a point for recruiting and training nursing students so it's just dedicating resources um for getting more nurses basically through student education so all together sounds really good of course some of it i don't think really applies to the mayo clinic anyways like the i mean i guess maybe having you would yeah, like the student stuff I don't really think applies, but definitely the things about the patients in emergency room hallways, uh, the staffing things. So I just wanted to bring that up. We just I just mentioned that they are a uh, one of the single largest private um, employers in Minnesota. I don't know how that uh, relates to the rest of the country, but I would assume that they are at least a significant employer of people and therefore a significant provider of healthcare in the country. And it is jarring to say the least that at least from this initial perspective they seem to be prioritizing profit over stuff that could really be uh not only making your workers more comfortable and uh more able to do their jobs but the people that you're supposed to be caring for more effectively cared for you're uh if you're a doctor or a nurse they uh you're supposed to do no harm right and the care of your patient always comes first Apparently that does not, I mean, we knew this already, but apparently it does not uh, extend to the suits running the hospital, right? Like you might have doctors in the hospital, but somebody without a medical degree is telling them what to do. Yeah. And if you know anyone that works in healthcare, I think the hospital administrators and the, basically the like company part of it, the like CEO, whatever, um, they will always, always get the you you just they're very hated amongst actual healthcare workers because all they care about is money that's basically it for the mayo clinic also just to add another little i guess piece of context for this um there was recently a cohort study that was done and it found that working more than 48 hours a week is associated with increased risk to patients shocking I know, right? Wow, well, working more than a full-time job um, and being super tired and burnt out is not good for your patient care. Me when I'm overworked, so I make mistakes. Who would have ever guessed? Yeah. And isn't that funny? Because residents, um, which is once you're out of medical school, and I find that actually, which I guess makes sense, right? If you're not going into medicine, why would you know this stuff? But a lot of my friends who are thinking about going into medical school have been, or even if they're not, they just ask me like, oh, what's next? And it's like, uh, I had one year, I'm done one year of medical school, I still have three more, and then I have three to six years of residency after that, and then probably a fellowship, which could be three to five years. So that's a lot that people don't understand. But when you're a resident, you are working with patients, but you're not you're still technically in training, so you're not making that full physician salary. Um, usually it's about $60,000 a year, but some residents are working like 80 hours a week. Right. So it so translates to minimum hour, wage. Just 48 hours a week shows that you have poor patient outcomes. I wonder what 80 hours a week looks like. Which is exactly why some residents are forming unions right now to try and get 
better conditions for working or at least increased pay for what they're doing because it's just the medical system is full of just like people taking advantage of other people it's a very you work your way up and then yes you're good and it's cushy and everything but they you are stepped on a lot and I don't really think that's right and a lot of people in my generation and this new generation of doctors do not think that's right so there's kind of a struggle right now between old doctors and new doctors and hospital administrators and everyone in the hospital. <laughs> Speaking of hospitals, I've been watching House lately. <laughs> I've only seen the one episode that we watched together, but people online, like on multiple websites, not just TikTok and Twitter, but like everywhere online, it seems like are posting clips from House. Yeah. It's funny. He is, he's something else. He's like such an a-hole all the time but he's always right so, so like that's kind of the whole show the show is also very funny because in many episodes they'll like go to the patient's house it's like what because hey, i saw someone in the comments was like do doctors actually do this no, no? house be like mm, today i will commit malpractice and be an a-hole and then break into someone's house yeah. to find out what's wrong with them did you have a last point? What was that? Uh, my last point is actually... Oh, that, shoot. So, we recently bought some uh, concert tickets. Uh, do you remember what the date is? Sometime in July or August or something? It's in September. It's in September. Wake me up in September. Wake me up when September ends. But, uh, sometime in September, we are going to see Baby Metal. Which, if you're unfamiliar with them... I, I think are they Korean or Japanese? Japanese, I think. It's they're a metal band, but it's like three Japanese girls. It's very it's unique. It's kind of silly. They're unique. They're kind of silly. Uh, the music is good, barring the vocals. But even the vocals are like kind of fun. Like they're not in English, so it, like I don't understand what they're saying. But the uh, sometimes you just gotta turn your brain off and enjoy the the sound. You know, it's good. Sound is good. Yeah, and um, it says it's a Japanese kawaii metal band, so <laughs> kind of sick. Um, so anyways, we're going to see that because uh, Live Nation had this like music or concert week sale that a lot of tickets were $25 for a lot of shows. Um, usually it was like the general admission kind of stuff. That like was, lawn seats? Yeah, lawn seats or standing room. Um, those were the ones that were mostly $25. Ours were, I think the $25 ones were sold out when we actually bought them, but the ones we got were only $45, so it wasn't like and they were the actual that seats. more expensive. Yeah, and they were seats. So, they're not close up, but it'll be fun. It should be fun. Uh, I think you were saying something about maybe we'll get, uh, dress up a certain way. You've got this outfit that's very pink. She has big boots that like come up to her knee. Yeah. They're very pink, and uh, she looks good. I like, I like that outfit, but... Uh, there is a silly fact about baby metal. Some of you are probably aware of who Rob Zombie is. He's metal. He's older from like, I mean, he's probably like my parents' age, maybe a little older than them. Um, one time he posted on Facebook a picture of him meeting the girls from baby metal. He's like, just met the baby metal uh, girls. These kids are great. And then some guy in the comments was like, that's weird, Rob. These girls aren't metal and you look weird hanging out with them. And he responded with, these girls are more metal than you'll ever be. <laughs> I love that. That's very, it's a good look for you, Rob Zombie. Right, and if you're getting that. roasted by Rob Zombie, maybe you should and, rethink your... And what's your problem with baby metal anyway, huh? Just because you don't like their music doesn't mean they're not cool. And it certainly doesn't mean they're not metal, just because they sound a little different than Iron Maiden. Yeah, I actually, we were listening because I just, I was like, well... So I'm not sure that I want to see Baby Metal because another one that was on was Big Time Rush. We're basically debating between seeing Big Time Rush or Baby Metal. I really didn't want to go to Big Time Rush because <laughs> that one was... it. Would, we only would have been going because it was silly, right? It's not because I actually think they make good music. Some of you probably don't even know who Big Time Rush is. They were on Nick, Nickelodeon, right? Yes. They were a little Nickelodeon boy band for a pseudo sitcom. Yeah. Anyways... I think it would have been so fun because I know it's just going to be a bunch of girls there, right, that are like around my age because who else would have been watching Big Time Rush, right? Ridiculous. And it would have been like a big party, would have had a great time, but 
So I looked up a baby metal song because he wanted to see baby metal more. I was like, okay, 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 let me look up. So we watched Gimme Chocolate, their music video for that. And I love it. Like, it's because there's the metal parts with, like, the music and the drums and Which everything. Which is what I like. Yeah. But then, like, in the chorus, it's very much more of, like, kind of that J-pop and, like, poppy sound. Um, and, like... I don't know. It's just cool. And like they do a little dance and they have their little metal outfits with like black and red and it's very cute. It's like my sort of thing. It's like our two aesthetics combined. Yeah, it's like they've got their hair all up and they've got these big old boots and their poofy outfits, which is very much what she's into. But if you removed the vocals, it would just sound like metal. Yeah. And it's funny, it says in the genre thing, like when you look them up, it says heavy metal, pop music, J-pop, death metal. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of why I love metal is because there's so many different ver subgenres of it. There's stuff ranging from, like, what a lot of our viewers are probably more familiar with, stuff like um, Iron Maiden and Metallica, like, some, or, uh, you know, more classic metal. Uh, all the way over to baby metal and to this band uh, who makes, like, pirate metal. It's ridiculous. It's it's silly. It's, it's, it's like if Jack Sparrow was singing metal. That's what it sounds like. It's ridiculous. But it's all metal and I love it. We're going to see that. It's going to be super fun. We'll have to take pictures and maybe post them. Obviously, it's not for months, but we'll let you know. It'll be fun. More tea. Tea time. <laughs> Wow. We got a lot of Taylor Swift news. Ooh. First of all, oh, Taylor Swift this weekend was at Gillette Stadium, which is the New England... It's the Patriots location. Stadium. It's the Patriots Stadium, so this was the New England spot of the tour, right? She's so big that you can't really be at smaller venues. She's got to be at huge ones, right? So Gillette Stadium is where she was. I'm sure it was sold out, too. It was. Every night, I think it was probably sold out. I mean, of course, you have scalpers. Some of the tickets, like last minute ones, well, I saw a thing that a dad paid like $20,000 for tickets for his family for like last minute seats. Which, by the way, if you're a scalper, shame on you. You're going to hell. <laughs> Heard it here first. And second of all, I mean, it's your money, do what you want with it, but I'm also kind of disgusted that anyone has enough money that they can just, oh yeah, $20,000 tickets, sure. There's <laughs> got to be a better use of your cash than $20,000 tickets to Taylor Swift. It's insane. So I, that's like, they must be like dummy rich, because... Gotta be. No one else would do or that. Or dummy stupid. Like... Yeah, but that's, a dad did it, so you know he's probably like got his rich kids who are spoiled and were like, daddy... Hey, I go see his 16-year-old daughter was like, Dad, I really need to see Taylor Swift. How much are your tickets, honey? $20,000? And there's only two reactions. Sure. No problem. That's not. A, that's that's no big deal. Or, <coughs> what? Are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> yeah. So considering he bought them and did not say you're out of your mind, they must be dummy rich. Yeah. Um, Like, more than I can fathom. Because... How are you just gonna drop twenty thousand dollars for a one night concert? That's insane. But also, like, it was a headline from some news site on Google or on Facebook that I saw that, and of course, naturally, as crazy as that is, people in the comments managed to be even more dumb because they were all blaming not all of them, but some of them were like, "Why would she even?" Uh, charge that much for tickets wow i didn't realize how greedy she was i'm like yeah like it's somehow taylor swift's fault but it's scalpers dude those are not that's someone who bought tickets for cheap or not necessarily cheap but at least like way cheaper well, maybe a 300 dollar ticket not a 20 grand i heard that her ticket started at like 45 dollars probably for the well for the, for the cheapest ones I and guess then some of them stadium. were probably up to 300 but like that was the range. Like, some of them were not even that expensive. And, of course, they sold out really quick. And then the scalpers sell them for insane prices afterwards. But, yeah. So, for the people in the Facebook comments, I mean, there is no hope for you guys. I don't know what's no, wrong with you. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to make it if you're the person in the Facebook comments blaming Taylor Swift for the $20,000 tickets. Like, I don't know what to tell you. That was not her decision. Although, it is... I'm not a big Taylor Swift fan. Her music is alright. I never cared. But I have to give it to her. 
That's impressive. If you're selling out, well, I know some of it is scalping, probably a good portion of it is scalping and people, like if you're a scalper, you just buy up all the tickets and then sell them back later. But if you're Taylor Swift, all you see is you just sold out an entire football stadium. And it was three nights in a row, I think. Or yeah. At least two. So that is an absolutely insane number of people. Probably most of them are not coming more than one night. Right? right. Like if we were to buy tickets, that would be for one show. We're not buying three nights in a row. So it's, you can almost triple the number of seats, right? So Taylor Swift can, like, can you Google how many seats Gillette Stadium has? It's probably, you know, in the thousands. It's got to be almost 70,000 people per night. So Taylor Swift can just... Two, if you made that one large stadium that could fit three times as many people instead of three nights at the same stadium, uh, almost 200,000 people are coming to one concert for Taylor Swift. That's insane. That's incredible. Yeah. Now multiply that by all the different places she went, right? Right. Maybe she goes to 15 different places around the country. Probably more. More obviously. than that, right? Um, But yeah, so... And she's really popular, and like that's why, actually, that's why Ticketmaster is facing heat from the government is because of how they handled her eras for ticketing stuff. Because people that wanted to go were not able to get seats, and they said they were gonna release more. Like they had a pre-order kind of thing, you know, when you get like a code or something so you can do yours early, mm -hmm. and then they open it to the public. Well, they were supposed to have extra seats for when they opened it later, but they all got sold out on that pre-code thing, which is a big thing, because then other people who were waiting weren't able to buy tickets, and she was mad, and of course fans were mad, and now <laughs> Ticketmaster was facing it from the government, and like, I think there, there's something going on there. There was some decision. Anyways, so Taylor Swift is a big thing right now. And a lot of my friends went to see her. I am a little jealous because it kind of looks fun, but there was no way I was, I didn't have a code and also like, I did not have time to sit and wait because you know, this is like a thousand people queue plus, like maybe 20,000 people queue just to wait. I think people were waiting hours to just get the chance to buy their tickets on that website because you know how flooded it was. It's a little ridiculous how much people care. Like I know she, you know, people, enjoy the music she makes and all that and you want to go to these big events but for a concert man sheesh few things about Taylor Swift first of all she has been okay so she was dating this other guy she was dating Joe Alwyn he was like not that big of a thing I mean he was a big thing for her because they were dating like six years and a lot of her recent albums like Lover which is a very romantic album was obviously written mostly about him and their relationship so people were like calling them mom and dad, right? Cause this is how fans are. Okay, kind of weird, but you know, I get it. So like, they were like, we love him. We love them together. They're so cute, blah, blah. And then they break up and we find this out recently. Crazy. And then we find out that she's dating Maddie Healy. I don't know if you know who that is, but he's someone, I don't know if he's a singer or if he's just in the band, but he's in the 1975. My sister loves them. Um, yeah, yeah, so he, yeah, so he's in the 1975 and he has some controversial things because he's a very, I think he's kind of like you where he has a very ironic sense of humor. I admit, I like to be a little offensive sometimes, but uh, I know when to keep it PG, you know? Yes. So anyways, apparently he's not very, uh, I guess he's, I don't know. I don't even think that he's not woke, but I think he makes jokes that are not woke. Whatever. I don't know. Fans go ballistic. They're like, we're not calling him dad. We don't like him. And this gets to the point where I saw, I was on TikTok and I saw this girl reading out and it was like a letter from the fans to Taylor Swift all about how she needs to break up with him and they don't like him and he's racist and all these things. It's so parasocial. People are gross with the way that they interact with their idols and their uh, the people who make the content they consume. Um, it's bad with Taylor Swift. I'm at, it's probably the most gross with Twitch streamers because these people, they can like speak directly to them. Like you can't like look at Taylor Swift in real time and actually speak to her and have her respond. But if you're like a Twitch streamer with, you know, say you've got 10,000 people watching you, which is a crazy amount. Um, 
and you've got 10,000 people arguing in your Twitch chat, you can donate $5 to have the Twitch streamer directly read what you've just said, and more than likely they'll respond, um, depending on how many viewers they have. And these people, they form really weird relationships where they're like, oh, Tom, the Twitch streamer, reads every word I say, right? Ooh, I can, I can ask him direct questions and get a response. Oh, we're friends. So then they get real weird about it. And people are doing that to Taylor Swift now, which is insane. Yeah. Listen, ladies, because it's ladies, right? It's not people like me men. writing letters. To... It might be gay men. But I but think I it's think, ladies. I think it's ladies. <laughs> um, and the video I saw was ladies. Taylor Swift is a 33-year-old woman. You are not her bestie. You are not in her circle. Taylor Swift can do her own thing. And at the end of the day, it is really weird and creepy to even be writing this thing. And like from the fans, like that is not all the fans. And people in the comments were like, hey, you do not speak for me, you know, kind of thing. Because it's really like weird. She's just dating a guy. And I don't- Who makes a few off color jokes once in a while. Yeah, I mean, he's weird. And he's got that irony sense of humor, but from what I looked up, like, I don't- No one ever said, like, what he did that was so bad or anything, at least that I heard, that was like, Oh, this is, like, a big concern. And yes, you might not like him, and you might want them to break up, which, let's face it, like, he really doesn't even seem like the kind of guy that she- Oh, well, he's probably the kind of guy that she might go for, but I don't know that it's even gonna last that long anyways, especially when it's so- short after a six year relationship you know this might just be like a rebound kind of thing so like can you just chill so that's that's point one people are weird about it people don't like it but like at the end of the day it's her life so people are weird yeah people are real weird the other entitled too the other thing that's funny <laughs> actually so i said last time that uh she's re-recording speak now so we're getting a new speak now taylor's version um Speak Now, like I said, was a very like romantic album. It had many songs about. Is that when she was guys. dating John Mayer? Well, she dated many different people at the time, but some of the songs on Speak Now are about John Mayer, um, Dear John, for example. And we know that relationship did not end well. Was maybe not good because let's see, we had talked about Jake Gyllenhaal and Taylor Swift, and that there was a little bit of an age gap there that was kind of weird. I think this one is maybe worse. Huh, yeah. Taylor Swift was 19 and John Mayer was 32. I had no idea he was that old. I That's thought he was younger than that. literally almost double her age. There is a, um, like a, I don't know how much stock you put into it, but one of my friends made a joke about, there's like a little calculation you can do. It's your age, divide, cut in half, plus seven. And then that makes it okay, right? Oh yeah, I forgot so, that. So, no, 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 do oh. his age. His age. Oh, his age. So, 32 divided by 2 plus 7. 23. So, she, she's under the cutoff, bro. Mm -hmm. That makes her too young for you. I mean, I think just if you can see that you're, you're almost double their age is, like, enough to be like, yeah, probably not. Yeah. Um, unless one of you is 30 and the other is, like, 60. And even then, like, we all know. Those, That's weird, too. Those are weird. But I guess, like, at least you're both firmly adults. I mean, she was over 18, so realistically speaking, she can do whatever she wants. Yes. Right? You are a legal adult, and nobody's doing anything wrong. But, uh, come on. It's weird. And I know, like, I feel, honestly, that in 18 to, I guess, probably 25, you do a lot of maturing and growing that, like, every year I feel like I'm a little bit different. Um, just in terms of like how I, my experiences and all this sort of stuff. So 19 is still pretty young, especially for, to be dating a 32 year old, which is like firmly an adult. You know? Yeah. I met you when you were 18. Yep. We've been together four years. It'll be five in the winter. Yep. Uh, we've both grown a lot. We've grown together a lot. Um, but... I'm 25 now, and you will be 23. I couldn't imagine being 32 dating a 19-year-old. Just, like, the maturity level is so different. Yeah. And I feel like, not to cut you off, oh, no. but I feel like a lot of people consider themselves fairly mature 
when they're like 18 or you know early 20s or whatever especially i feel like especially women because we're always told that like women age faster mature faster and it's true you do like you go through puberty younger and stuff like that i just like physiologically we're different right but even like for a girl 19 you're still a kid yeah uh and that's so true and if you're a girl you probably know this but it's very easy as especially like when you're actually under 18 uh, with the online stuff you'll have guys who are in their like mid 20s and you're 15 and they message you and you're like you're so mature <laughs> nobody thinks they're that's more like mature than rumor a stuff girl. it's like groomer things if you're 14 and a guy online that's in his 20s is telling you how mature you are run yeah. Well, in general, if a guy that's in his 20s is talking to you and you're like 14, run. John Mayer was like a not good relationship. And actually, there was like, I think in her Midnight's album, which is her most recent one, uh, there was a song, Would've, Could've, Should've, which is about him. And I think there was like this huge line that everyone was like, oh my god, because it said... It's like, give me back my girlhood, it was mine first or something, which is about John Mayer, that song. So it's like a very big thing that... It, it hurt her. She was hurt by the John Mayer thing, and we hate John Mayer, right? Safe to say, the songs about John Mayer on Speak Now, like Dear John, not good. But, you know who else she dated around that time? Taylor Lautner. <laughs> <laughs> Shark Jake, Boy. Jacob Black, Shark Boy. Um, and she had a really good, well, she liked him a lot. She wrote Back to December about him, which is one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs, which is actually her basically saying, like, I'm sorry, I treated you poorly, and I wish I could go back and, like, take it back kind of stuff. So she really liked him. That's very mature, Taylor Swift. Yeah. Thank you. So Back to December is about how she kind of messed that one up and that she wishes she could change it. Um, so he recently did a interview and then made a TikTok where he was like, listen, I'm basically it was like, I'm Mark safe from Speak Now, Taylor's version. Like, I, I like the song that was about me. It was a good song. I have a good song about me. Um, but <laughs> look out for poor John Mayer. Rip to him. Prayers for John Mayer. And then he made a TikTok. In the TikTok, Taylor Lautner, like literally it has, cause on TikTok you put songs under your video a lot of times. So it's Dear John playing. And then he's like, gets down on one knees and is just praying. Cause it's just like, you know, he's good with John Mayer's gonna that, get it. but John Mayer is going to face wrath. Uh -huh. Not necessarily from Taylor, but assuredly sure from the fans. fans. <laughs> the same fans who are writing letters to break up with your boyfriend, Taylor, we don't like him. Uh, it's not gonna be pretty for John Mayer. Also, I mean, obviously, because it's that album, she's going to remake Dear John, so it is going to be a little rough for him. And uh, a lot of times she'll re release unreleased songs with it. Um, we don't, I mean, it could be newer songs, but there also might be some older songs that she releases that were never released before. So who knows? There could be some also that we never heard about him. I don't know. They did that with Michael Jackson after his death. They released a bunch of his, like, recorded but unfinished songs on a new album. Bro went, like platinum on an album after he died <laughs> yeah. um so that's kind of just a funny point and then the last thing is a little bit more tea uh so she's on this eras tour right and keith urban who is a country singer and i assume worked with her i don't know uh, but they were obviously she started out as a country singer so there's that connection anyways obviously if you're a celebrity that goes to see a celebrity's concert you're probably in on in the backstage or like in a special room right um especially if you're friends with them so he was there for the eras tour i don't know i think it was in nashville that showing and he's taking a video and in the background of his video you could see phoebe bridgers who's been touring with taylor swift she's a singer and bo burnham who's a comedian, like, making out in the background of Keith Urban's video. So people were like, oh my god, Keith Urban just outed Bo Burnham and Phoebe Bridgers as, like, dating. <laughs> or at least, like, making out. Which people were kind of speculating, but they hadn't really made it public yet, I don't think, when this happened. And I don't even know if they have really announced it yet, but I mean, I guess you kind of have to, or at least say something about it, because <laughs> it's on Keith Urban's video, so that was kind of funny, too. Celebrity culture is weird. Yeah. So, that's the tea. That's the news. Thanks for joining us. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hope you enjoyed this episode of yeah. the Breakfast. Hours. Kind of an abrupt end, but uh, the cam the battery and the camera's dying. So yeah, it's uh, driving me crazy. I wish I had money to buy a new one or fix this, but 
put your cash app in the description. For real. <laughs> or your PayPal, Venmo, whatever. Uh, my social security number and banking information. <laughs> so make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Send us your breakfast. Send us your breakfast. And we will see you next week. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe. From my parents' camp, probably. Going to, yeah. um, going, going to the lake. Going to the lake. Maybe a shorter episode, but... Thanks for tuning in, and we hope to see you next week. Bye. What's up? So I got the. No, 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 no. No, no, no.